share some uh, information because this was really, uh, this comes up a lot. So, and it's just this real general topic about how to make your best art. And, um, and um, let's see here, I'm, okay. Hold on, just getting it so I can see this on Facebook. Okay, cool. Um, uh, anyway, uh, so how to make your best art. This comes up for me, uh, this question uh, is is really what I'm involved in answering for people. Uh, that's what Art to Life does. We help people make their best art. So I thought I would just give you the real uh, the real easy uh, primary points that that maybe could be helpful for you. Um, you know, I remember when I first was making art and. Uh, and when the first time someone wanted to buy something I had made and they just said they loved it so much and how much was it? And I was so nervous and not sure about what I was making that uh, I just gave it to them. I'm like, I don't, I don't want any money here. Just take it, you know? And this was, this is really a funny thing. It's because it feels so good to be seen when you're making something that uh, you're not sure about. Making art, just the very essence of making art is makes you vulnerable or it should make you vulnerable. Like that's just normal. So I just wanna say right now, right here that doing art is a practice of vulnerability. You know, I gave you, and, and we do this. This is why artists undersell their work. They're getting so much because other people want it. You feel so filled, you know? So, uh, and, and I gave my work away in the beginning because it was, it was fine, right? So, so know that, know that if this feels uh, a little, you know, vulnerable at times, that's just garden variety normal. So I'm gonna go over a couple points that I want to, uh, that, that are really, really helpful for kind of getting track of your work. Um, there's three of them. And the first one is just about listening to yourself. Um, the creativity is scary. There is that vulnerability. And, and just so you know, if you're doing this at all, you're in a very small group of people. Most people won't explore their, their own creativity. Everyone could, but most won't because it's pretty scary and it's an it's a unknown terrain. Um, your art is a value to people because that's the closest anybody can get to it. They can't make it themselves. So they see something new and refreshing that that they, that they respond to and they wanna buy it. So know that that's, uh, that's how this whole thing works. That's the juice that people are, they're, they're wanting to find things that make themselves feel alive. Um, but always, always when you're embarking on this art making th thing and it's harder in the beginning because it's so unknown. We tend to look outside of ourselves. We compare ourselves. We're not sure like, well, how that, what is this thing supposed to look like? The sooner you can start listening to what it feels like, the sooner you can start listening to uh, what resonates for you outside of all that other stuff, um, that is going to start making your work better. And not only that, it's easier to make work, work like that. So when we're not thinking about other things, worrying about stuff, and we're just paying attention to our art, and suddenly like what I'm describing right now is you're making something. And if you can drop into, ask yourself the question, what of whatever's happening in front of me, what, what do I love here? What's interesting to me? What's going on here? Do I like that part? Do I like that part? Look what happens when I put white paint here and cover it up. You can feel areas that have energy for you. And those are the places you wanna go. You wanna double down and focus on that. There's a story, there's a, a, a pathway that is opening up for you in the thing you're making while you're making it. That's presence. You can't see that story. You can't feel that work unless you're present. And when you're present, 
you can't be thinking about other people's work. You can't be comparing yourself to other people. You can't uh, do, do any of that stuff. It's just this wonderful, beautiful state of wonder. And it's kind of like you're curious, you're wondrous, and, and it, what's happening in front of me? Now, what can kind of pull you out of presence and I mean, I'm just speaking to myself, you guys, when I say this, because this is easier said than done. What pulls you out of being in the present is worrying about where it's going, worrying about the outcome. What is this going to look like? Is this turning out? I think it's turning out. I'm, I love it. I don't want to ruin it. All that yanks you out of presence. So uh, it's, it's this listening and we all can do this. That's what's so cool about it. It's all so easy. When I can, I can get anybody, you know, in a workshop or whatever, to like think about this art making thing in a different way. They suddenly can start doing this, and it's the most remarkable thing. And what's crazy is when you're listening to yourself, because you're not listening to anything else really. The work feels like you, and because the work is like you it's different. And because it's different, other people want it. And it has energy. This is it. This is like a huge nugget, right? Um, so that's a giant thing. I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I'm going to look over here in the comments. I don't know if any of you guys have ever uh, heard of that book, um, Be Here Now by Ram Dass. It's this really great, it's old, it's from like the 60s or the 70s. But you know, he was a kind of a translator of Eastern philosophy to for the West, but be here now was was just what I was sh sharing with you. Be present with what you're doing. Uh, it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, hey, Pam. Yeah, I love the idea of focusing on my art in, instead of how people react. That being said, the paintings people like the most are the ones I did when I was fully engaged. I'm telling you, like I could be talking, the title of this blog post could be how to make a living selling art <laughs> because this is how you make amazing art this is the same conversation whether if i was talking to someone who's already got a huge career and they want to double it this is the same information you have to double down on yourself on how things feel um, the next point that i want to make here is that i just need to stress that it's okay to not know right? To not know where you're going, to not know, you don't have to pull yourself out of being in presence with when you're making your art to think about where it's supposed to end up. You, it's okay. Just postpone that as long as you can. <laughs> it's hard because everything in life is the opposite. We need to get to places on time. We need to uh, have specific outcomes. We need to study and get a good grade on the test. We need to design a building that turns out a certain way. We gotta make a bridge that can carry a certain amount of weight. Everything we do from shopping to cooking, to, there's so many areas of our lives um, where we have to know ahead of time what the outcome is we want and we have to plan it and we have to do it by routine and, and wire it. And that isn't art making. And that's why it's such a beautiful compliment to our lives because it is none of the things that are in our lives, right? Um, but what's great is that because we don't know the outcome, right? We're not sure when things happen in our work, we, we become surprised. It's, it's genuinely like, oh my God, I had no idea if I did this or that, or I tried to do this and I covered it up or I glued this thing on. Look what's happening. There's a wonder and a surprise that lifts you up. It's its own payment for doing this practice. That surprise and wonder that is all wrapped up in this stage of just being present, that's the big payoff. That's why you know we talk about people talk about starving artists, but what they don't talk about is like money's not the most important thing when you're able to do this. It's okay, like whatever. I'll figure out money in another way. But to be in this, to be in myself, to be making my art in this powerful, potent way where I feel so alive and I'm so present, and it's it's really cool. It's really enjoyable, and I'm making something. 
it turns out that is completely unique and that expresses who I am today. I mean, that is, that's a huge accomplishment. That's a huge goal to strive for. That is such a great thing to integrate into your life. When you're unrehearsed, you're more like yourself. When you just are winging it, people can see you better. They can see you. It's like if I was trying to read a script right now, it's like, I don't, I, you know, it would be better and I wouldn't say you know so much, but people don't connect to that. People connect to when you're yourself, warts and all, and because they're the same way. And what you want to do is you want to connect. You want to connect first with yourself. And trust me, people will find your work. People will find the kind of work that they connect to. But when you connect with someone, it's a powerful thing. And it's not going to be everybody. That's fine. But there's a gajillion people out there. If you're looking to like build a following and sell your work and be able to do this in a way that provides for, your, for you and your family, this is what it's about. It's about connection. So, I mean, you know, if you're listening to, I mean, these beautiful uh, talks today uh, for the inauguration, you know, when they're really rehearsed, when you feel the person who's speaking, you know, when Biden sheds a tear, it's so emotional. You just so connect because it's not rehearsed. The young woman who spoke today, that beautiful poem, you know, it's like, wow, it just, it, it, it just brings you to your knees practically. This is what we want. This is what we want to do with our art. And um, holding the surprise and the wonder within yourself first. You get to feel that way. You have to feel that way. You have to connect to that fault, that feeling in order to have it be in your work. Um, you cannot mail this in, unfortunately. You can't do art by routine. Now, of, of course you, you can, and I'm not saying you, you don't. <laughs> that can be a cool thing. You can make the same kind of painting over and over and you can sell it and have a life. I'm, I'm not really speaking to that. There's no, I'm not passing a value judgment on it, but I'm talking about making something that's authentic, making something that's of today, of how you're feeling, that there's going to be a progression that you can look back in your life and see all the things that you made, that made you who you are and who you're becoming. That's what I'm talking about. That for me is what art making is. That's why, that's what art making is. It's the process of becoming yourself. So this third point here, so you know, we, I talked about this listening, which is so, so important. And, and then the second point is like, it's okay to not know. It's preferable, I would say, to not totally figure it out. And of course, you know, if you want it to look like a water skier, you're gonna have to figure that out, but try to leave some uncertainty, try to experiment in the beginning, try to leave some room in this process for something surprising to happen on the way to the predictable outcome. It can be, a, it can be small steps towards this, right? I'm not saying just ignore any outcome, but build this in integrate this in. The third point is, is about following the breadcrumbs of what lights you up. Um, when someone buys your work, what they're buying, what they're wanting, which it always surprises me that people um, want the work. I mean, I, it's always kind of a small miracle. Like I made this bizarre thing and I wasn't even sure. And someone's just like, please, can I have this? You know, how much, you know, uh, it always is amazing to me that, that this is, this is a reality, but this is the reality of our planet. This is the reality of being a human being. People crave to feel alive. And they've craved to feel some passion, something in their life that is different and new. And unfortunately for, fortunately for us, unfortunately for them, most people can't do this. Most people won't do this. So they can buy your work or they can hang it on the wall or they can follow you on Instagram and they can wonder at the amazing stuff that you're doing and all the making that's happening around you. So, um, where you get this juice and energy from, you can't really manufacture wonder or surprise um, or curiosity, but you can set up the conditions 
for this to arise. And the way you do that is by playing, is by experimenting, is by letting go of the outcome and dropping into that presence and then paying ridiculous attention to the things that really move you, to the things that light you up. This is, this is our work. I mean, if there's a work involved in being an artist, um, it's, it's this, it's that we have to be really disciplined about focusing on the things that we are discovering and that are moving us and write them down, and take notes, stick them in places in your house, put up that painting so you see it, pay attention to it, talk about it, share it with other people, you know, like indoctrinate yourself, steep yourself in the stuff that lights you up. When, when you are aligned in this way, when you have those things around you, when you're seeing stuff in your work and you're connecting to that feeling, everything becomes easier. Everything becomes easier. And I'm telling you, this is a hard thing to convince artists uh, to let go of the side of the pool, so to speak, and swim into the deep end. But once you're out there for a little while, it's much easier to make original work. The process becomes easier. It's more enjoyable. It's cooler. It's like really surprising and wonderful. Being present is easier because you already have all that. Everybody does. You already have everything you need. You're just getting rid of the stuff that you were just sort of hanging onto the side with. You don't need any of that. You can swim totally freely. And that is what makes the amazing, amazing work. The influences, sure. We can look at outside of ourselves at what cool stuff is out there but pay attention to the parts of it that you like. Be discerning with the stuff out there that, that moves you. It's not, you don't want to be Diebenkorn, but you can be part of Diebenkorn. You can take some cool like way that he uses the paint and, and incorporate that into how you make art. What are the colors of people's art that you love and how can you bring that into your work? Why does it, why does it move you? Why does it move you and how? How can I bring the things that I'm seeing out in the world, into my work. How can I make myself feel more and more inspired as I'm making this? And it starts with paying super, super close attention to what it is that moves you and lights you up. And that happens almost by accident. It happens when you sit down and you're in motion. You know, it, it doesn't happen. And I think you can relate to this. It doesn't happen when you're thinking about it. When you're thinking about making your art, none of this happens. And that's why it's hard to think about making art. It's hard to make art or to get the momentum up to make art because it's kind of scary and we procrastinate and we avoid it. But making art when you're doing it, it doesn't have to be hard. It can just be the biggest romp in the world. It can be really a joyful, pretty cool time. Yes, you're gonna struggle, but it's more struggling from a little place like, whoa, wait a second, I love this. Now it's all gone ugly. What happened? How is it possible that this thing was so cool a second ago? You know, you're not attached. You're not attached. You're just playing in this. You're just swimming in the water of your own making. And it's just, that is a such a good way to, to initiate your art practice and, and kind of keep it going. So. Um, listening to yourself, being okay or getting okay with not knowing the outcome and then following those breadcrumbs, paying attention to the things that light you up in that process. That's how you find your style. That's how you sell amazing art. That's how you teach art. That's how you do all of it. It's all that, those are all the bits and pieces that we just have to keep in front and center. And we forget it and that's okay. And then we sometimes even um, lose our way completely only to come back. But it's much easier to come back if you have some sort of footholds that you can, that you can rest on. These are footholds. These will, will really hold you in place. So 
I just wanted to share that today because um, I was just on a call with an artist and I, and I was writing down these points and I thought, you know, this, I say this so much, you know, and this is what I teach myself. This is what I'm doing. You know, when I lose my way and I don't feel confident and it happens to all of us, these are the things that I focus on and it's been, re it really helps me. So I hope some of those were helpful for you guys. Um, thanks for being here, Becky. Um, Julie, uh, Julie's here for the roller coaster. Awesome. Great. Uh, Michelle, I try to use my heart to make the art and my head for the science of the media and materials I'm using. Yeah, it is kind of like that. It's like we have to balance the thinking as well as, as you know, just the emotion. Um, you know, your heart has to be full and, and your head has to be filled with cool stuff and ideas and all of that. I mean, we integrate it. And I think that's what makes it so interesting and so tricky. Um, anyway, uh, for those of you who are new here, we, um, we're gearing up part of all this work that I've been doing and talking to people and why this is so front and center, all this teaching stuff is that we are going to be having our free, uh, art to life workshop that's starting on February 15th. If any of you guys want to, um, jump in on that, you can go, uh, to, our a2lworkshop.com and jo join for that free workshop. It's going to be really, really cool. This year it starts the day after Valentine's Day. And it's a, it's a deep dive into just the primary principles that I teach. Um, it's not, it's, it's, it's the value design. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I go over that if you haven't heard, um, I mean, I imagine if you're new here, you haven't heard this because this is a different approach to art making and I'd love love for you to be there. So, um, oh, thanks for posting that in the, in the feed. Zane, uh, nice to see you here from, uh, from New Zealand. Awesome. I'm so jealous of you guys who have done such an amazing job with COVID. I, I was reading that uh, you guys are, I don't think that's even a problem in New Zealand anymore, which is remarkable. Allison, thanks for being here. Oh, great. I'm so glad. Sometimes that's what I do. I think, you know, I should just do this on the page because it's going to help somebody probably, you know, so I appreciate you saying that. Uh, Carla just moved. If I can get my studio set up by then, would love to be there. Awesome. Great. You know, you don't need a big studio to participate in the online free workshop. It's, um, you can just sit at the side of the kitchen table. In fact, most people who uh, come and we try to get as many people as possible. It's, it's a whole build up to the, this whole season of learning, which is, is the creative visionary program that we offer after that. It's a huge part of the push for art to life. Art to life focuses on the season of learning. It's the first part of it's in the spring. It's the first part of the year and it's pretty much starting February 15th. So most people, a lot of people who haven't done a lot of art, um, are there and they're they're just paying attention and taking notes and doing stuff on the side of the kitchen table. So don't feel you have to have everything figured out. Just come. Uh, there's going to be some cool new surprises and some amazing stuff this year because we do this every year. It's it's art to life's big thing, and um, each year we get better at doing it and we add stuff because I got to keep it exciting for me. You know, there's stuff we're doing this year that I'm a little terrified of, but I, it's the good kind of scary. You know what I mean? It's like the same kind of scary that I was talking about in making our art. You know, it's like, if you're not sure, it's a little scary and that's a good place to be. It keeps you humble, makes better art. And it certainly makes it better when you're teaching someone something to be trying to show and express things in new and different ways. So that's what we're up to. Um, again, that's um, a2lworkshop.com if you want to uh, sign up for that and we'll keep you, we'll nail you with uh, emails and keep you focused so you can come in uh, when all that starts. Susan, thanks for being here. Um, awesome, fantastic. Yeah, it's so great. Julie, thanks for being here. Paul, um, good. Rose, thank you so much. Fantastic. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to hop off. Um, I hope you have a great day. This is kind of a historic day. I'm feeling pretty great. Um, I have to say uh, a new year, a new administration. Uh, I don't know. I mean, politics aside, I mean, putting kindness and, and um, you know, putting kindness first is, is just it's so aligned with what, what I feel and what we're doing in Art to Life. It just feels really great. So thanks for being here. I will talk to you guys real soon. Okay.